What's going on friends? Everybody will talk to you about what model of Harley Davidson you need to buy. But the one thing you really don't hear a whole lot about is what engine should you be looking for? Especially if you're brand new to the brand and you're looking for your first Harley Davidson motorcycle, getting the right engine in the right model can be just as important as anything else you consider when purchasing a new used Harley Davidson. So if you're brand new to Harley-Davidson and if you've never owned one before, it can be really tough, especially deciding just alone on which model of motorcycle you want to buy. But models span many years and they can come with many different engines. So today we're going to focus on the Evolution engine, the Twin Cam 88, 96, 103, and we'll touch on the 110 and we'll touch on the early model Milwaukee 8s. Before we get too far into the video today, Please be sure to drop a like if you enjoy the video, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Now with any used Harley Davidson, you have to consider the possibility of there being a couple minor issues to fix. Now the older the bike, I would highly recommend you already having a relationship with an independent shop lined up, because any older motorcycle, most Harley Davidson dealerships aren't going to work on anything over 10 years old. So if you buy an older bike, be sure that you're able to do your own work, or you're at least willing to, or you already have an independent shop in mind that you want to work with. So for the first engine we're going to start with today, we're going to start out with the good old Evolution engine. Now the Evolution is a wonderful motor. This engine is stoutly reliable, but it does have a few little quirks that you're going to want to be aware of. Now with any older Evo motor, you got to remember that these are not major powerhouses. Their stock power, if you find a stock one, you're looking at power levels roughly about what a modern 883 is putting out, but a good open air cleaner, a set of pipes, and a good jet kit in the carburetor, that's going to bring you up to, you know, about 55, 60 horsepower. And with a good cam, you can achieve about 75 horse. Now, of course, these are 80 cubic inches, and if you like to work on your own motorcycle, these are a great bike to buy because they're excellent, they're easy to work on, and a lot of the models that are available today were available with an Evo engine. Granted, the ones today are a lot more updated. Now, with the Evo engines, these are mainly all carbureted. Now, there are some dotted out there that actually have fuel injection, but the fuel injection system is the old Magneti Morelli fuel injection system, which it works decent for what it is, but for me, I tend to kind of stay away from the older fuel-injected models because getting diagnostics run on them or even finding parts if you were to have a problem with the fuel injection system can be somewhat of an issue. Now, also, with the, with the Evo engine, we've also got to consider that inner cam bearings can be somewhat of an issue on these. The factory inner cam bearing wasn't all that great, and you want to go with the aftermarket from Timken, their Torrington bearing which is a nice upgrade, especially while you're in there doing a cam. The other issue that you can experience with an Evo is they have this wonky pushrod angle, and it does usually require Evos to get a new set of lifters about every 40,000 miles. If you're looking at a bike with an Evo engine, that is really something to consider before you throw down your hard-earned money. And once again, I did mention that they are carbureted and fuel-injected, so with it being carbureted, from time to time, you're going to need to make some minor carburetor adjustments just to keep it running with weather changes or elevation changes. So just make sure you're familiar with carburetors and you can do some basic carburetor maintenance. Other than that, Evo is an excellent solid platform for a first Harley Davidson. Now the next engine that we're going to encounter when we're looking at used Harleys is going to be the twin cam engine. This is mainly the motorcycle that's out there on the used market right now is the twin cam. Now twin cam 88s, they came about in 1999. These are really good motors, but they have some drawbacks and some issues. Number one, with any twin cam, they do run hot. Now, the 88 was kind of a, it had some bugs. It really had some bugs in the early years. So starting in from 1999 to 2002, they had a much better bottom end. They had the Timken tapered bearing bottom end. Now in 2003, they went to a roller bearing bottom end, which was not as stout as the Timken bottom end. Now, once again, these are mainly carbureted and there are some fuel injected models out there. If you're looking at a fuel injected 88, I would highly suggest getting one 2002 or newer because they have the more modern Delphi fuel injection system in them. 
And also with the 88s, same thing with the carburetors, you're gonna have to make some minor adjustments to them from time to time. Now, if you are interested in a twin cam 88, there is one thing that is critical, and you guys probably already know what I'm gonna say, it is your cam chain tensioners. These are not negotiable when it comes to these. Yes, you can go with an aftermarket spring tensioner. This is probably the cheapest way to do it, is replace the factory ones and just keep putting spring tensioners in them, but you run the risk of them putting too much pressure on the cam chain, and then you get debris from the shoes going through the engine. One of the best upgrades, and this is at a bare minimum, what I would recommend you do, is upgrade to upgrade the cam plate and get the hydraulic cam chain tensioners in it. And of course, if you wanna go further and your cranks run out will allow for it, Going with the gear drive system is another excellent choice. The gear drive system does have its drawbacks because you will need to maintain 2000 or less run out with that crank throughout the life of your gear system because if the gears get out of alignment, they're gonna run wonky and it's gonna shell the motor. Now also with the twin cam 88, and this is only specific to the Dyna models. If you're looking at a 2006 Dyna model with a twin cam 88 in it, these bikes actually have the hydraulic cam chain tensioners in them and they also have a little different set of heads than what we had in previous years. So if you're looking at a 2006 model Dyna, just bear in mind that the engine, it is an 88, but it does have some little differentiating features in there. So cams that are say they'll fit an 88, they will not fit in the 2006 88 because the 2006 88, only in the Dynas, is more more like the 96 that came in 2007. So 2006 was kind of an experimental year for the twin cam 88. Now twin cam 96, all twin cam 96s, these are all fuel injected motorcycles. And personally, the twin cam 96 to me is one of the absolute best values out there on the market because the twin cam 96 has the same case bore as the 103. So if you buy a 96 and later on down the road you decide you want some more power, you could easily upgrade that to a 103 or even take it all the way up to a 110 with a drop-on kit. Now, the one thing that we really want to be aware of with twin cam 96s, especially from 2007 to the two, through the 2009 model year, they did have some compensator failures out there. So what you want to do with those, if, you, if it's not having an issue, I wouldn't really worry too much about the compensator at that time. But if you do have a problem, do not go back with the OEM compensator. Go with the compensator from either Screamin' Eagle, at, at a bare minimum, the Screamin' Eagle compensator, or you could step up to the Baker, which is quite a bit more expensive. Or if you want to eliminate the problem altogether, go with the Dark Horse Compensator Eliminator. This is a sprocket that replaces the compensator, but it has a cush drive built in, and that cush drive is also rebuildable. It is a great alternative to going back with a compensator. Power on your twin cam 96 is pretty decent. You can put a cam in these and get fairly good power out of them with the 96 inch displacement. Now, once again, they aren't really big horsepower producers, but they will produce quite a bit of torque. So one of the most modern used motorcycles that you can buy that's got all the bells and whistles, especially if you get one 2014 or later, is gonna be any Harley Davidson big twin with the twin cam 103 in it. The 103 is, in my opinion, probably one of the best twin cams out there. I really feel like Harley Davidson got it right on the 103. Now the 103, they had the compensator issues worked out. It still, of course, it is a twin cam, so it did run hot, but there are ways to fix that with oil coolers, and I have a whole other video on how to cool down your twin cam. Now the 103 is where we really saw the power levels start to rise and the torque levels I'm not saying it's gonna blow the roof off, but we're talking about 75 horsepower right out of the box with the twin cam 103 HO. They went with a little higher lift cam in that 103 HO in case you were curious what was different between the 103 and the 103 HO. One thing to note with all twin cam engines is that in 2003, they started pressing the crank assemblies together and they also went with that roller bearing design which they were able to crank out crankshafts and get motorcycles together quicker. Now, while it's pressed together, it's somewhere around 40,000 PSI. If you really start putting a lot of horsepower into these, they have been known to basically shift on the crank pin a little bit, and then you get a lot of walk and wobble out of the crankshaft. Does it happen? Yes. Does it happen to every bike? Absolutely not. And one of the other pluses about a Twin Cam 103, if you have to have your work done at a Harley-Davidson dealer, 
Harley-Davidson dealers will still typically work on a twin cam engine, especially if it's one of the later model 103s. Like I said, most dealers, they have a 10 year span. They won't work on anything over 10 years old because older bikes, they fix one thing, something else breaks, and nine times out of 10, they get blamed for it by the customer. Now, if you absolutely have to have one of the later, later model motorcycles and you want that new Milwaukee 8, I will say the Milwaukee 8, it does have a decent sound to it, but it doesn't sound like a twin cam, and it's far from the sound of any carbureted Harley out there. But the Milwaukee 8 produces excellent power. These engines respond super well to cams. Half the time you can still get these, they probably still got a warranty under them too, especially depending on what year you got. But when it comes to the Milwaukee 8 twin cam, I would personally kind of stay away from the 2017 models unless you could take your VIN number down to a dealership and verify that it's had all the updates done to the oil pump. Because the early model M8s, especially the 2017 models and some 2018 models, they had an issue with oil something. Basically meaning that oil was being drawn out of the crankcase, it wasn't making it back to the crankcase, and it was pooling up in places in the engine it shouldn't, and it was, for lack of a better terminology, uh, grenading motors. That's bottom line. It's a really sad deal. It's happened to a lot of people, but fortunately, the ones that I have seen it happen to, they were under warranty when it happened. So just make sure that you take the VIN number down there and you see what's been done to that motorcycle. Make sure that it has had the updated oil pump in it. So guys, if you don't really want to do your own work, the M8 is probably going to be your bike to buy because you can still get it done at the dealer. Now, independent shops, if you know a good one, they've been out there long enough now. I'm sure the guys out at the indie shops are pretty much more familiar with them now. So that's always a good option for you. As I always recommend, doing your own work or going to an independent shop because you don't want to pay out the buck going to a dealer. Now, if you got the money to do the work at the dealer, by all means, have at it. Because at the dealership, it does have its benefits. They got the latest parts, the latest tech, and the guys that work there, they got all the inside information on these engines. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the down and dirty rundown on some of the used engines that you're going to encounter out there when you're buying a used Harley-Davidson motorcycle. And if you're brand new to Harley-Davidson, you've never owned one before, like I mentioned, it's really easy to find some help on getting the model of bike that you want, whether it be a Sportster, a Touring model, or even a Dyna, Softail, you name it. But nobody really talks about the engines. And one of the worst things you can do is be really super stoked about getting this new Harley Davidson, well, new to you Harley Davidson, and then you start telling everybody about it, and then somebody, you get that, oh, you got one of those bikes. Anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Be sure to let me know in the comments on which engine that you prefer if you're buying a used Harley Davidson motorcycle. But anyhow, guys, stay warm out there. We're just getting thawed out of here. We have been freezed out for about the past week. We had power outages, rolling blackouts, you name it. It's been fun, but I finally got out, was able to get the video done for you guys. So anyhow, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Stay safe, stay warm, and if you are riding, please dodge the cars. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you guys in next week's video. Thank you for watching. Huh.